phagocytes of the innate immune system such as macrophages and neutrophils can go off and kill foreign organisms. To do this, they need to be able to detect the organisms as foreign and or dangerous, as well as the ability to kill the ingested organisms. Foreign organisms contain products that we refer to as PAMPs, pathogen-associated molecular patterns. Examples of PAMPs include bacterial cell wall products such as lipopolysaccharide and peptidoglycan, as well as DNA or RNA from bacteria or viruses. Today we will look at a simple experiment that can be used to measure a very complex process, the recognition of PAMPs and the immune response that follows. In particular, we will be measuring nitric oxide production, a free radical synthesized by immune cells to attack pathogens. How do phagocytes recognize PAMPs at the cellular level? It involves molecules such as TLRs, toll-like receptors. There are about 10 different TLRs expressed in mammalian cells, which detect various PAMPs. TLRs that detect bacterial cell wall products can often be found on the plasma membrane of macrophages, whereas TLRs which recognize pathogen nucleic acids are commonly found within the cell. Once TLRs recognize PAMPs, they induce an entire cascade of immune responses, ranging from increasing the phagocyte's capacity for killing, alerting other immune cells to the infection, and promoting the maturation of antigen-presenting cells. We can measure one of these responses in the form of nitric oxide production, which are reactive free radicals produced to damage pathogens. Nitric oxide is synthesized through the enzyme inducible nitric oxide synthase, or INOS. INOS is not always present in macrophages, and its expression requires two signals, a priming signal and a triggering signal from a PAMP. In this experiment, we will use interferon gamma as the primary signal for macrophages. If these conditions are met, the macrophages make nitric oxide, which can be oxidized to nitrite and nitrate, and the amount of nitrite can be monitored through its reaction with Grice reagent. This reaction generates a pink compound which can be measured using a spectrophotometer. The intensity of the pink color allows us to calculate the amount of nitrite present, which ultimately gives us the level of nitric oxide production. For this experiment to work, we will need macrophages. We are using bone marrow-derived macrophages cultured from mice. We will be comparing the PAMP recognition in two different genotypes, wild-type and TLR4 knockout macrophages. TLR4 is designed to recognize LPS as the PAMP. So when we expose these macrophages to varying combinations of interferon gamma and LPS, we should see different levels of nitric oxide produced. The macrophages will be split across five conditions. A, untreated wild-type cells. B, wild-type cells exposed to LPS. C, wild-type cells exposed to interferon gamma. D, wild-type cells exposed to both LPS and interferon gamma. And E, TLR4 knockout cells exposed to both interferon gamma and LPS. For each of these conditions, we will detect the amount of nitrite present and infer the level of nitric oxide production by adding Grice reagent and measuring the intensity of the color change. We can do the experiment in a 96 well plate. Add 100 microliters of samples A, B, C, D, and E into separate wells. We will also set up a series of known nitrite concentrations on the plate so that we can compare them against their respective color readings. This will be the basis of our standard curve that can be used to convert color intensity into nitrite concentration values. Add 100 microliters of Grice reagent into each well. Allow 5 minutes for the color reaction to stabilize. You should be able to visualize the color change after this point. To quantify this color intensity, we can use the spectrophotometer to read the absorbance at 490 nanometers, roughly the wavelength of the observed color. We can then generate results that highlight the nitrite concentration in each condition. In sample A, we should see a negligible baseline level of nitrite, as there are no priming signals or PAMPs. In sample B, we expose wild-type cells to LPS, but there is no priming signal added. Any production of nitric oxide will be hampered by the absence of primary signals, which can bolster INOS expression. In sample C, we get around this issue by adding interferon gamma, but this time there is no PAMP to recognize. It is in sample D where everything converges. The wild-type cells are exposed to interferon gamma to prime the expression of INOS, which can then produce nitric oxide after PAMP recognition. In this case, the PAMP is LPS, and you will see the nitrate concentration will be at its highest level across this sample. It is in sample E where things become even more interesting. There is no perceptible increase in nitride level despite the presence of interferon gamma and LPS. The one difference between samples D and E is that TLR4 has been knocked out in the macrophages used for sample E. TLR4 is the receptor on macrophages that recognizes LPS. 
If TLO4 is knocked out, the capacity for the macrophages to recognize the LPS as a PAMP is significantly reduced. Hence, minimal amounts of nitrite detected in our experiment, minimal amounts of nitric oxide production despite the presence of priming signals and PAMPs. We can of course repeat this experiment using macrophages with different genetic deletions and systematically expose the cells to different PAMPs. Depending on the molecular events required to recognize each PAMP, specific genetic deletions will compromise specific components of the immune response. This simple experiment can be adapted to investigate the complex machinations of the immune system. The immune response is a delicate dance between host and pathogen, managed by a precise series of events. It is easy to take this for granted, but when we take a closer look at this dynamic interplay, you can begin to appreciate nature's elegant molecular design. 